What's going on guys and welcome back to a brand new video. This is Web Dev Journey and in today's video we're going to be talking about a new series which is Rabbit MQ. Yes, we're going to do a whole series with Rabbit MQ, but before we get into that, I do want to say thank you guys for supporting me. Thank you for watching my channel. It really means a lot or my videos at least. So um and and you know, a little bit of news. I got my first uh Patreon support. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will be doing more with Patreon for the, for the guys that support me. So if you do decide to support me, there's a link down below for my Patreon page. So check that out if you want to support me. Anyways, let's get back into the video about the new series and whatnot. Um, so why are we doing RabbitMQ? Now, a lot of you guys love the microservice architecture series that I've done. And if you're going to, going to be using microservices... Yeah, microservices, sorry, I was thinking about it. Uh, if you're going to be using it, then you're going to need some kind of message broker, right? Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be RabbitMQ. It could be, I remember in the comments, someone told me about Bull. And I'm super sorry for that person because I'm not going to be doing a video on Bull. It's not as popular as RabbitMQ, right? Um, but anyways, that's not the point. Bull, which is Redis-based. Also, RSMQ, which is redis Read a simple message you, it says right here. Um, also, you have other things like Kafka. I don't even know how you say this, bro. I do not know how you say this. Um, but you got this one. You got also, if you're going to Google or the cloud, you got Google Cloud, PubSub. You even have Azure Service Bus. You even have uh, Amazon, AWS, SQS, Simple Queue Service. Right? SQS. Yeah, there it is. Simple, simple uh, queue service there. Yep. Anyways, um, the reason why I'm doing Rabbit MQL because I think it's the most popular one, and the mo the the real reason is because I'm more familiar with this one than any any other ones. So that's why we're going to be doing a Rabbit MQ uh, series. By the way, guys, leave a comment down below if you do not know what, why you would use a message broker for what. Leave it down below, and in the next video, I will explain all of that for you guys. Why would you do it? Some test use cases, I guess you could say, um, before we actually get into this, uh, the actual series. So, anyways, guys, that was it. It was just a short intro on like what we're going to be doing. Um, Oh, and by the way, if you really want to know what we're going to be doing, uh, if you go scroll down, go to Rabbit MQ Tutorials, this is exactly what we're going to be doing. If you learn this, these six of them, because Publisher Confirms doesn't do JavaScript, but if you learn these first six, you pretty much have everything that you need to work with Rabbit MQ uh, pretty confidently, okay? So we're going to be doing this. I know a lot of you people don't like reading, so that's why we're doing videos, <laughs> right? But anyways, yeah, let me know down in the comments down below. What do you think about series? And also, if you want me to explain why you would use uh, a message broker, use cases and all that. So anyways, guys, that was it for this video. Thank you guys for watching my videos. I really do appreciate you taking your time to watch my videos. It helps me out a lot. So thank you guys. And thank you, my one Patreon supporter. I'm going to be using that. I'm going to be uh, bragging about that for like the next 15 videos. But thank you guys anyways for, <laughs> for supporting me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.